Hi guys, I hope everybody's well. I just um, come over here on this little bit of wood of mine. You can see it behind me. There's a little bit of a garden here. I'm just sitting here pondering like I do most days. Not here, but <laughs> I ponder all the time. And uh, you know, one of the questions that I guess I do, I don't know if ever others do, think about is, is there a God? Why are we here? So I wanted to sit and talk about this, give my 2P on it, and um, to see what others thought. Why are we here? I think about this a lot. You know, why was I sent here? And many different religions and many different um, people have opinions of why we're here. And the one I think I like the most, and um, makes the most sense to me and that's all it that's all it's based on is what I've heard and what makes the most sense is we've come here for to experience the if you like the essence of life and so if you listen to people talking up from the near-death experience people that's uh, people who died and came back and told a story of what they seen um, they always have something kind of cool to say about seeing a light and so on. If you look, listen to uh, some of the workings and teachings of Nikola Tesla, he um, talks about everything is energy, everything is electricity, so everything's vibrating, everything has a cycle. So if you I think, okay, it sounds very interesting, you know, very good, but it why are we here? And this is what this is my opinion and this is what I've come up with we're here to experience what it's like to be in a human body now some people might say we're we're born and we die but who who is born and who dies you know the, the spirit can go anywhere and be born in anybody so you know my spirit you know if you talk about like the Holy Spirit is a is the spirit of God no gender just um, genderless so you can't say God is a he or is she because it doesn't have a body you can say that God has a, a person a male personality or a female personality so if you look at creation you can say that's a female um, creation or feminine creation because of the reproduction you know seeds and so on and they grow and everything grows and a male I guess is a thunderstorm I don't know so but the spirit we say people say you go back to spirit or you go back to God or you go to heaven so why do we come here in the first place to experience what so I think we come here and we're born into a you know a mom and dad um, make love and then a baby's on the way and the spirit goes in at some point maybe the spirit goes into the body on the first breath like they go <gasps> you know and take that breath and the spirit goes in or the spirit goes in before the um, the baby's born I don't know that but I just think, you know, so somebody's come to visit, look, who's this? Sugar? Um, so, so let's say the baby's born, there's a spirit in there, why does the spirit come here to be in that body? To experience touch, to experience love, because if you're a spirit being, you can't experience any of that stuff, because you don't have fingers, you don't have a body so a baby is born the spirit goes in and then you have a life experience here on this particular planet so if there's other planets and other and other solar systems or other galaxies we're in the Milky Way galaxy so if we're born to a on a, another planet maybe we look different maybe we look the same I don't know but there's billions of galaxies so who knows there could be an earth in each galaxy but you know 
we can't figure that out yet so maybe we can but we haven't been told that so we come here get in the earth suit come out love mom and dad you know if, a, if it's a boy fall in love with a girl if it's a girl fall in love with a boy or whatever and then you have babies and then you become a granddad or grandma and you know you get old and crusty and fall apart and die so but along that journey you maybe you're interested in gardening maybe you're interested in bodybuilding maybe you're interested in food walking whatever it's your experience what do you think that's my 2p anyway the next one was who is God um, let's just said I already said that God can't you know we we say God is a he but God doesn't have a body so it is he's not male or female so uh, you see what I said automatically he is not he is not so but you don't want to say it neither so how do you refer to something like that I don't know so and is there one God or is it like a committee? Here's a reason, here's my reasons to think there is, okay? So I live here in Thailand and sometimes it can be very, very hot and dry for a long time. And then all of a sudden it rains. It rains and what happens? Lots of bugs come. And the bugs come just as the seed of a tree or a new plant is coming. And the bugs eat that plant. And then the birds come, the birds lay their eggs and they eat those bugs that eat the trees and there's like a whole cycle that happens just when it rains so that's one thing to say that is there a God and then I think to, I'll go out I'll put myself out on a limb here and say is God schizophrenic this stuff thought out is all this stuff a planned is there a committee somewhere who says hey we screwed that up in the next galaxy we'll do this and have a amendment or is this like a big game to add to this confusion where do we go when we pass away? And, how, and what, what do we do while we're on the other side? Have a look at some of the, um, if you go to YouTube or just on the internet and, it, and search for near-death experiences, NDE, and you'll see all kinds of really cool, people with cool stories of when they've passed and what they've seen and how they come back, seeing the light and so on. And, you know, when somebody dies in Tibet, they actually have a book. In the West, they call it the Book of the Dead, Tibetan Book of the Dead, but it's not called that. But that's what I know it as, but it's called something different. And what happens is a Lama, who is a Buddhist, a Lama is, from what I understand, has like a PhD, the equivalent of a PhD. So he's not just like your local village nutcase. He's actually, you know, studied a long time and they have a book and the book takes the, it takes the book to the house where the person passed and the, because it's Tibet it's a high altitude and cold or cooler but cold I guess most of the time and they put herbs and things to keep the body cool and the body actually stays in the house for 40 days and every day the Lama comes and reads a part of the book for 40 days and what it's supposed to do is help the person go to the other side peacefully so like um, you heard of poltergeist and uh, bad spirits and haunted houses so if somebody dies and they're troubled when you know they had a bad death and they're troubled then the spirit won't go but go it'll stay here and you know haunt and cause trouble but this book when they read it is to reassure the person to go ahead and go on and go on to the wherever they come from go back and um, is it, I think it's the law of entropy where nothing's wasted, everything is recycled. So I guess we're our, I'm guessing our spirit goes back and we choose to come back here again and again and again. I can tell you one thing, the way I feel right now is I want to find the guy who sent me here or person who sent me here in the first place and bang him on the head because I don't want to be here. All my life I felt like, um, you know, the spare whatever at a wedding. I'm like, what am I doing here? What is this, what is this journey for? You know, I'd, I think I've been here many times before, but I think I said before I, w I don't want to come back, and I come back. And I feel like I don't belong here. 
you know, there's lots of reasons why I feel that, and I'm not going to go into them here, but... So why was I sent here? Why did I come here? I don't know. I think I have a reason, a purpose, and I think I know what that purpose is, but I don't want to discuss it here anyway. But so when you die, you go to the other side and you go back to source, whatever that is, and you can come back as many times as you want from what I understand. I actually talked to a guy in um, Java. His, we were referred to him as uh, Mr. Eddie. That's what his, I was told his name is. He's older than me, he's past now, but I went to visit him in Java. In, um, anyway, I went to see him and he said I had been here I'd already been here 37 times and I was like I didn't di agree or disagree but this you know I just heard what he had to say and many other things he said but interesting okay just to finish off then so if you take the whole light spectrum not just what we see with our eyes but the whole light spectrum and put it on the side of the Empire State Building okay it's of the two inches inside of the light spectrum if it's as long or tall as the Empire State Building, is all we can interact with. So, there's a lot of stuff we probably can't see or hear, or many different things, you know, because our, our, uh, we can't hear what a dog can hear. So, here's just one more last thought, okay? You ever walk around in a house or been somewhere and you see things on the edge of your like peripheral vision, like you see something, you turn and you think, hey, somebody just walked into the other room. So maybe out the corner of your eye, you can see things that you can't see from looking straight forward, you know? So if I'm looking directly at you, you can see certain things, but if you look, you know, when you're not paying attention, but when you see something move, you can see something that's out of the, our normal light spectrum, but you see something moving. And you can feel things so I'll end it there otherwise we can I can talk for a while about that but I just want to hear what your okay. opinions are so thanks so much for watching thanks for subscribing I hope everybody's well stay fit eat well and be healthy all the best good night from paradise <laughs>